AGQ, it's Alex Albon. Today I'm going undercover on the internet. It's actually me. So let's go through some Twitter questions, or tweets, I guess it is. First one from Ali. Hey Alex Albon, how does it feel to be the second tallest F1 driver in history? Is that a real stats? I'm 6'2", which isn't that tall. Formula 1 drivers are all very short. It's actually a bad thing in Formula 1 because it normally carries weight. Weight's not good in F1 and it, it makes me very lanky. Replied. Next tweet from Rich. Not watching F1 2023 season for the racing, watching to see what Alex Albon does with his hair. When I'm traveling around the world, <laughs> I've been looking at hairdressers. When can I bleach it? When do I need to do like, just a tone? There's a whole logistical side to keeping my hair blondy white. So when I first dyed my hair, I scored points, which was a big, big deal for us uh, last year. And it felt like um, a bit of a tradition. And every single time I dyed my hair, I had a good result. It's not a great superstition to have because it's actually, it's not as simple as wearing a, a bracelet or something. It's actually, it takes a bit of effort. Next question from Bart Crosley. Thoughts on Vegas. It's going to be interesting, Vegas. I feel like it's not your normal Formula One race. It's clearly going to be a big show, which I feel like America does very well. At a normal race weekend, people are having a good time, but their focus is always on the racing. In an America, it just feels like flat out. <laughs> Good vibes. Jumping onto Reddit. Wow. A lot of likes. Alex Albon scores a point for Williams. And then there was a comment saying, is this going to go down as one of the best races in a while? Slowest car, basically didn't pit P20 to P10. It was a really special weekend. We were struggling that year, especially at the start of the year. We didn't have the pace. I had a year away. I felt like there was a part of me that really wanted to prove myself. And so having this opportunity and having the race I had, it just felt great. You know, it was like one of these things where I felt like, you know, I'm back and I'm here to stay and I belong here. It's a moment I'll never forget. And hopefully, you know, we can continue having more and more races like that. Uh, Nosa3391 asking, um, can someone explain how the new FIA budget caps affect smaller teams like Williams? As a driver, the way it affects us, in my opinion, we have to be very accurate in the way that we upgrade our car. We don't have enough money to just put things on and try it and say, okay, it doesn't work. Let's go on to the next one. We have maybe one upgrade or two upgrades during the whole year that's gonna improve our car. You'll see some top teams bring maybe nine or 10 updates during the year, plus possibly more. So it does feel like there's a bigger emphasis on us to make sure that we get it right. Next, GP2, he asks, I'm curious what Alex will do in the future in F1. Does he look at seats elsewhere? Does he think the Williams is a safe option and can stick with them for many, many seasons, meaning guaranteed job security? My focus is on, on, on Williams. Coming into any workplace, I imagine, but especially in my area, you kind of have a stock. Teams value you in a certain way. What increases your own driver stock is, is really showing your potential in the car and out the car. People must probably look at teams and say, that guy's fast, he's fast around a lap, but there's much more to that. How is his development skills? How can he help the team? Is he a team player to really make himself more valuable than just his lap time. If we are in a position where we're able to score podiums and get to a point where we can score wins, what an amazing relationship and story that would be. I would love to be able to say that. Explain like I'm five. <laughs> Why is there a minimum weight requirement in Formula One? Wouldn't teams be incentivized to lessen the weight of their cars for faster speeds? True, yes they would. The reason for weight limit is because of safety. The thinner the car, the lighter the car, the more chance of us getting injured. Formula One have a weight limit to protect the driver. But it's a complicated question and a five-year-old should be able to understand my answer if he asked that question. <laughs> Wikipedia. You can edit your own Wikipedia comments, can't you? On 22nd August 2021, Albon won his maiden DTM race at the Nürburgring, becoming the first Thai driver to win a DTM race. Yes, 2021. It was a, a tough year. Um, on the sidelines, I wasn't in Formula One and I was in DTM, which was basically a GT3 car, a, a, a souped up modern day Ferrari. It was a tough year. I, I really struggled to learn them cars and um, it was so different to a Formula One car. I won my first race, it was a great feeling. It put me on the map back into Formula One. Around that time was, was the time I was also talking to Williams. Albon and his family own a number of pets consisting of eight cats, a dog and a horse. It's actually changed. It's actually got to more cats now. So I think we're operating <laughs> my house at, <laughs> hang on a minute, four, eight, nine, 10, yeah, we have got 12 cats now, so this Wikipedia page needs to be updated. The dog is still there, the horse is, uh, is still there, and we, I think we might get another horse. A lot of cat hair, so if you're allergic to, to cats, like my dad is, it's a disaster. How do you pronounce that? Cure? 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 Is it cure? 
Do you guys know? Curora. Cora. Cora. How good of a driver is Alex Albon? Wow. What a question. He's okay. He's not bad. He's in F1. So, posted. Do F1 teams get involved at the grassroots level to identify and nurture talent? Yes, they do, and they're doing it more and more. I remember when I was go-karting, when I was 11 years old, I got signed as a Red Bull driver. I was maybe one of the youngest drivers to ever be part of a junior Formula One team. But nowadays, you see it more and more. It's really beneficial, especially if you're a young kid. The parents sometimes don't actually know what to do with their kid. What team do they need to be with when they make the step from go-karting to Formula Four? A lot of the teams get it right. What happens to F1 cars when they crash in a race? Mechanics get angry. The first thing they do is they obviously take all the parts that are damaged that are over, but they also scan the cars. You know when a pregnant lady has like this, um, the gel and they, they scan um, the body? It's kind of like that to check for micro tears in the, in the monocoque. They strip it to its bone and, and make sure everything's okay. It's normally very expensive as well, so, <laughs> which we do get reminded about. Hopping onto YouTube, from Trinity Leicester. I'm so impressed with how he came back from those bumps with Hamilton. He's on fire lately. Thank you very much. Those bumps with Hamilton. Minor, minor bumps along the way, character building bumps. When I read comments a lot about, you know, Lewis and myself or the crashes we had, I honestly don't really get it. Crashes happen all the time and that wasn't the reason for a tough time in, in 2020. But I do feel like I've become a much stronger person since then. Character building and I feel like I'm a stronger driver for it. Next, now we're turning into Instagram. Camille asks, wow, I wonder what goes through their heads when they crash. It's mixed, actually. During this crash, the first thing I think of is, oh, I've let the team down. I think especially when you're kind of sliding and you're going towards the barriers, you're in this hope that you don't hit the wall. But of course, you know you're going to hit the wall. It's pretty safe. And I wouldn't say I would want to crash every time. I don't think about my safety or my life when I'm about to hit a wall. Posted, this is my golf swing, which is um, not great. Mick actually disagrees. He says, nice swing. Has it improved since you and Lily started dating? How's her driving? So if you don't know Lily, my girlfriend, she's a pro golfer on the LPGA Tour. I got into golf kind of the same time we started to see each other. And she will try to teach me and try to tell me everything I'm doing is wrong. But I'm just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So now her coach has to teach me. And my swing has improved, that's for sure. But her driving skills, genie's work. <laughs> Onto TikTok now. Henry McKenzie comments, I totally forgot this even happened. How do you go from a coma to back on the racetrack in just a few weeks? So this was a comment in response to me being in, in hospital in Monza. I had appendicitis. I woke up with extreme pain and basically I went to the hospital that morning. I needed an operation and it turned into a bit of a mess. And so I had two weeks, I believe, to get ready for Singapore, which if you don't know, is one of the hardest tracks of the year. My trainer and I, we locked ourselves in a gym pretty much for, for two weeks, made the flight to Singapore and then we had a crash. <laughs> it was one of them feelings like, oh, I can't believe it, but so proud of, of the work that my trainer and I did. I kind of take the pride in that over the result itself. Chat GPT, oi oi oi. What do you think are the most important qualities that a successful racing driver should have? I'm still trying to figure that out. There's almost the basics that they need to be good at. The first thing is they need to have a good feel, a very good sense of their butt and the way that um, the car moves. The second thing is mentally strong, as, as I think any athlete has to be, especially in the world of Formula One with so much attention to, to only 20 drivers. It, it, it is a, a tough sport mentally. The third thing is smart. We're almost engineers as well. There's so much data, so much to know. It's really important to give the right feedback to, to the engineers and to the, to the factory to, to know what to do with the car. You've got to be selfish in the right ways. You know, it's a team sport, but at the same time, you have to fight for yourself. You need that hunger, that self-drive in you, that dog in you. <laughs> I think there's a lot of different personalities in Formula One who have been very successful. Okay, that's it from me. I'm Alex Albon, and I'm signing off the internet. <laughs>